Hey there, welcome to Something About Tabletop. My name is Master Blyer, and with me is... The illustrious hobo. Alright, today is going to be a rather... Well, I'm assuming it's going to be a large episode. I may put it in two, I'm not even sure. All about gear. And just because... Well, explain why gear's crazy in this game, hobo. <laughs> Gear is crazy in this game because the um it basically presents you with a near limitless, um, limitless amount of options for what you can equip your character with, whether that be bioware, cyberware, things you're directly cramming into your body, or the things you um actually physically wear. It's and ridiculous. That, yeah, cramming into the body isn't just where it could be drugs, it could be magical things, foci, magical tattoos. Just it, I can't even bring it off the top of my head. There are so many options, and something I do see a lot from newer players is this is kind of directed towards them, and I guess a discussion about gear as well, so you uh, more experienced players listen in as well, we're just going to be talking about it in general, is just no one gets the gear right. I mean, shit, I don't get the gear right. There's always something that I'm forgetting, and sometimes it's like, uh, it just becomes too much. So hopefully this should help you think about the gear that you should be looking towards, and not just getting extraneous crap, but you will be anyway. Well, I mean, like, there's always a good list of essentials, but occasionally you forget the flashlight and then you have to ask a janitor to give you one while you're on a job, because mm -hmm. crap, we forgot one. Plus, your GM may actually be nice. Uh, sometimes I am, sometimes I aren't. It really depends on my mood. Um, I might just say, oh, it's covered by your lifestyle. You'd probably have one anyway. This is why I like the lifestyle, because um, I'm not sure... I haven't actually checked in 5th, but I know in 4th, it gave you an allotment of free money that you could just use, like, flashlights, probably like 10... 20 new yen, you, you'd be assumed million. to have it, you know, if you're in a medium or high lifestyle, you know, it's only that much, you you could pretty much just pick that up, like, it's no problem, but, you know, but if the DM wants to punish a group for being idiots, well, that's another thing, <laughs> but generally, if people have their car on handy, I generally allow them to have a lot of small things, you know what I mean, just because, well, why not, a lot of people have a lot of shit in their car, I know I do. Yeah, it's in the boot. I mean, like, what else do you put in the boot other than dead bodies? But we have a compartment for that. Yup. Anyway, we're just going to be going through... It won't be really following the book in sections about what they do, but we're just going to be going through chunks. Uh, we're going to be using Run and Gun and the normal book if we do talk about gear. Um, just... This is going to be more... I mean, we may say what are some of the best weapons and guns, but it's more going to be a lot about how you can use gear and what you should be looking for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, one of us actually has Chum open in front of him, so when we talk about specific gear, I can actually call up a page number. Indeed you can. Okie dokie, so first we are going to start off with armor, and this isn't just armor, this is what you wear, what you look like. And at least for me personally, I have three to four different uh, clothing and suits and all this stuff for different situations. Yeah, depending on whether how, like, how strapped for cash you are, it's always good to have a different variety of clothing. Because you never know when you're going to be in upscale Bellevue, or when you're going to be in Redmond Barrens. And wearing a nice suit in the Barrens is a great way to get stabbed. Yeah, but, you know, wearing a massive armor jacket and carrying your assault rifle in the downtown is a good way to get locked up. <laughs> yeah, so prepare for every, um, get a suit for every season. And some of those seasons are, of course, uh, meeting High Johnsons and going to downtown in nicer areas. Like, this is where you're going to meet, you have to you dress to impress. This is your suits, your dresses. And don't worry, they come armoured. That's in Run a Gun, by the way. I think there's only the Actioneer business suit, and that's about it, in the core book. In the core book, yeah, I think you're very strapped for options. Of course, Run and Gun giving us a plethora of interesting options, and I think... For most people, the, uh, the the choice, and I'm going to give this my official seal of approval for fashionable clothing, is your Berwick suit and your Agentum coat. Most of the time my characters just wear that everywhere, even in the slums, but... <laughs> <laughs> I know, but like, in terms of, if we're talking about, like, if you can get a suit, the suit to get is definitely that one, because the wireless on it gives you bonuses to negotiate, and... For characters who don't have that many points and who aren't the main face, it still allows you to help, or it gives that face that little bit extra of an edge. Actually, there's something we should uh, cover now um, before we get a little bit deeper into armor, but there's a thing called wireless bonus in this game. Uh, this is something they put in because in 4th edition, 
Um, there was the whole, yeah, it's on Wi-Fi, but you could hardwire everything and skin leak everything. But in this, they decided that you can't do that anymore, which doesn't make sense technologically wise. But basically, when something is wireless enabled, uh, hackers can fry that shit. Hackers can melt it. Hell, hackers can destroy it. But you get a cool bonus. Also, they can track you, which is probably worse. Well, it is especially worse if you're wearing your good old chameleon suit, you're hiding up, and then someone starts turning it off, and you're standing in the midst of a compound. Bad times. Or they track you and they tell the guards where you are. <laughs> There's that one. They do both. <laughs> yeah, usually both. Um, uh, but yeah, let, let's continue back onto armor after touching that. So, yeah, we talked about the higher fashion armor, and there is high fashion armors. They're mainly in runner gun. Um, I mean, there's a huge selection of them. I'm actually checking them out now. I've got the book in front of me. Jesus, there's so many of them, and sadly, I mean, this game definitely does have the best things to get, and because of character creation, most of the time you can usually get some of the best, apart from the stuff that's by above 12 availability, which if you don't know, you can't get a character creation, unless of course your DM is doing a higher power game, or a lower power yeah. game, and you have lower availability, it, it just really depends, but most of the time, you're going to be dealing with 12, and if you're playing at some of our, our online games in the channel, it's always 12. Yeah, or if you're playing on Shadow Net or Runner Hub, it's always going to be that flat 12. But he's right. When it comes to the upper echelons of armor, generally, almost all, I think, I believe all of the high fashion armor is available from the get go from character gen. It's only specific combat armor, which is restricted at base generation. Yeah, which I find, I don't know, I definitely think they should have had, like, a, a super suit or something, you know? Like, I, I definitely think the Sleeping Tiger shouldn't have been available. It's it's the most overpowered suit in the game. It is uh, thirteen thousand five hundred for a thirteen armor. This is more armor than an armor jacket. It has ten capacity, which you know is pretty decent, and only ten availability. And this thing has freaking uh, ruth ruthenium polymer coating, which basically means it can go semi invisible. And well, it's ridiculous. It's, um, the funny thing about ruthenium polymer coating is that the best part of it is. You go invisible, but it doesn't give you a bonus to stealth. It gives them negatives to perception. And that, in some cases, is much better. <laughs> it's also compatible with the Synergist Long Coat, which means you can get 16 armor from high fashion alone. And anyone who knows their armor from base, just being your general street sam, knows that that's a lot of armor for, like, a starting character, like, for fashionable armor. Yeah, yeah. What else does this thing have? Yeah, it's just got everything. It's ridiculous. Or oh, it does have a negative effect. Newest model. You, if you get a second hand, it's worse. I guess it is a $13,000 yeah. suit, so I could see people getting a second hand. Second hand, what's that doing? I think it's 25% less. I cannot remember, actually. Never actually bought second hand in this game. I probably should, but um, no, I think Sleeping Tiger gets most people's dishonorable mention in this category because mechanically it's so good, but fundamentally in terms of like roleplay, it gets really boring when you just see all these characters coming through. What armor they have? Sleeping Tiger. And it's that's your face. Like, it's almost everyone. I've seen Sleeping Tigers, because they almost, if you have the money, they're great on almost any character, because you can look good and be well-armored. It's ridiculous. And you can go invisible. Yeah, but and if you need to split, you technically split. Technically, better than the stealth suit. You, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. And also, something to note, this may or may not come up, but, I mean, it does, it does have a description in Run a Gun about all these suits, but... Basically, what is written is what it looks like. Most of the stuff like armor jackets and things, it's pretty liberal. You can change the color or whatever it looks like, but these are specific makes of suits. You can't reskin it so much. I mean, if your DM allows you, go ahead, but I've definitely seen people exploit this before. It's like, oh, I don't really want a suit per se, so can I just reskin this to something else and still have this overpowered armor? I've also seen that a lot um, amongst some of the players in the online communities, and I was never very approving of that sort of thing either. Yeah, especially for high fashion armor. It's like, I mean, it does get a bit weird when everyone's wearing the exact same suit, but you, you know what I mean. 
spot the runners. They'll be the ones wearing the sleeping tigers. <laughs> Sleeping tigers and uh, Berwick suits and ungenib coats. Anyway, apart from that, there's the more everyday wear. I mean, depending on where you live and what you do, most everyday wear, I mean, you could probably get away with maybe an armor vest and, of course, the high fashion clothing you can also use or just wearing just an armor. I think you just get armored clothes. They don't give much armor, but it's definitely... I mean, for role play wise, right? In <laughs> if you were this person, you wouldn't be wearing an armor jacket all the time. You wouldn't be wearing a freaking dress all the time. You'd want to dress down now and again. And I mean, if your character doesn't, maybe make that a part of his character. But then that's everyone because everyone seems to wear suit wearing, trench coat wearing badasses in Shadowrun. Which is welcome fine. to Shadowrun. <laughs> yeah, but no um, I'm a little different. I actually never, I never go armored clothing. I always go with a second skin. The uh, oh yeah, they, yeah, are, yeah. they are custom fits, but I like them because. As it, it it means I can wear like a nice like a normal nice suit, not not like a brand suit, or I can wear my clothing, and I still have some protection, which is I think I think second skin is just as good, if not better, than armored clothing, and it removes the bulk. Yeah. Um. Also, something to note: people who are uh, spamming custom fit stuff, um. If you get an augmentation or anything like that, or your attributes are boosted, not through magic, you need no suit. So just remember that. That's uh, cool. I start with all of my base stats from the physical up high. I'm only boosting the mental, man. <laughs> yeah, that's usually how it goes as well. I mean, have your highs, highs, and you have your lows, lows, and then you can fix your lows early. It's yeah, the amount of street sands with uh, two logic, you see. And one charisma up by 10 with karma. Up at two. Two with ten karma. Oh, you know you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to more of the bulk and go more about combat, I guess. Um, what is some sick little combat combos that you know of? Uh, you see, um, I was never, I've never really been a fan of stacking armor, but for the most part, the most common one you see is an armored jacket stacked up with P um with PP secure tech stuff. Yeah. And the reason you don't wear this normally is because a lot of the, apart from the second skin, I think, um, all the other stuff that adds on to armor is really bulky. And a lot of the armor, the strong armor, is really bulky. Apart from the armor jacket, it's a big fucking jacket. And generally how it goes, people do forget that it is obvious it has armor. People just kind of go, oh no, it just looks like a trench coat. You can barely tell it's armor. Well, how about you buy a coat that actually does that? Because they do exist. They're in there. Well, I mean, like, the, um, even, I think, the, uh, the armoured coat, there's actually a thing, I think it's, it's either called the armoured coat or the lead coat, and even that, it's bulky, but it's not as bulky as, say, an armoured jacket, because it's actually an old-style western duster. Yeah, the lined coat, I think. It's yeah, the lined. Yeah, it, th that is the trench coat, by the way, that is actually a trench coat, it's called the lined coat. But everyone um, just wears armoured jackets and then calls them trench coats. <laughs> which is fine. I guess, which is fine. I mean, uh, I, I don't mind, really. I mean, technically it has more coverage than an armor jacket, but I say it's a beefy freaking trench coat either way. Well, I mean, considering I believe it only gives, I, I think it only gives like eight or nine armor comparatively to like the like the 12 provided by an armor jacket. I think mine's 10, I think. I'll have a, I'll have a quick look. Yeah. yeah no, yeah, it's I'll... only nine. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. So that's what I mean. Like, if you get a second skin, you've already got like, that's one less armor than a lined coat. Yeah, definitely. No bulk. But again, custom fit. Very important, guys. Yeah. I mean, apart from the armors, uh, you generally you, uh, see most people rocking the armor jacket and all that. And, of course, you've got to remember your ballistic mask or your helmet or something and chuck that in. And also remember also that armor can have extra stuff on it, like gel packs, which gives you extra armor, but you're knocked down more easily. Uh, and just jamming comm links in, and um, eye magnification in helmets and stuff is always really good as well. I mean, and if you're also playing a mage or an adept who doesn't have a jack, troads. You can put troads in your helmet and in your masks. Good thing to do. But the most important thing about armor jackets is the auto-injector. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't forget that, oh, I get shot down with stun damage, auto-injector, stim pack. Yeah, so the auto-injector basically allows you, I think you have to have the wireless on to do it, like, as, as like, no action. But you can just inject whatever. The drug obviously has to be in there. Um, whatever it may be, a kamikaze, fucking cocaine for all I care. I don't think you can... can yeah, you can. I do cocaine. You can do cocaine. But, yeah, I mean, there is so much selection. Uh, 
just just take a look. I mean, especially in Run and Gun, there's heaps. But always remember, you can customize your pieces. Um, this becomes even more of a thing when we get to the weapons. Um, I mean, like there are there just in armor there are less choices, but in general, what you tend to see is the people picking up chem seals or like chem protection early on because. Uh, a big trick for new players that usually gets people is when the GM finally decides to step it up and use Pepper Punch. And uh, um, that can just mess an entire group up. Because you then spend, I mean, usually you're going to fail your rolls and spend the next five rounds vomiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I think that's uh, pretty much up for armor. So uh, let's take. Well, a... I can only add more customization, but I'm not going to. Cause we'd, we'd be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. So uh, let's get to um weapons, which has more customization than armor. I feel like you don't use a lot of the customizations in weapons, though. I feel like a lot of the stuff in armor gets used, but there are just some stuff in weapons that don't. Ah, uh, there's a shitload of options though, and there's a shitload of weapons, and a lot of it's bulk. Uh, in, in the game system, uh, because there's just guns that are just worse. But the thing is, is they're not as co like as high cost. But sometimes there's guns that cost more and are worse, which always confuses me from a design point. But from a real-world simulation point, it makes sense. You're going to have worse guns that cost more. That's just how the world goes. Well, I mean, like, they also put the choice in, because, like, mechanically, some of these guns are worse, but, I mean, I guess that's why brand loyalty is in the game as well, because sometimes... You don't just want an Ares Predator for, like, all your other Shadowrun buddies. Sometimes you want a branding high power. Or maybe you want to go Western. You want to get a Cavalier Deputy, even though mechanically they're worse. Yeah, but uh, revolvers are badass, Hobo. Revolvers yeah, are badass. Yeah, they are, man. <laughs> you just can't silence them, I don't think. <laughs> no, because <laughs> they're kind of open in, in the part yeah, where because the revolver is. Yeah, because <laughs> the gas is out of the, gun. the cylinder. Unless you had, like, a fucking, I don't know... <laughs> Like a covering over. I mean, I think you, know, you can silence revolvers, but you definitely have to try. <laughs> oh, it's very hard, but you can. It's like the same way you, you can silence shotguns, but it's very hard to. But in Shadowrun, that's a big no no. Can't do that. Can't, isn't there a. Sh I think there was a shotgun silencer in 4th edition. I don't know if there's one in 5th. There was in 4th edition, but I don't think there's one in 5th um, edition, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, Alright. Alrighty then, so. Um... Uh, where can we start with weapons? I guess we'll start with the melee weapons, because that's what I see first. Um, in terms of melee weapons, get the one that's best for you, because I think these ones are probably a lot more balanced than the guns, in terms of everything. Uh, and because there's the whole concealability thing, as with armor, it is a big thing with guns as well. Like, how concealable is something? Like, there's a reason I always get pistols on pretty much all my characters. You know, because they're super concealable, and you can pretty much get them anywhere unless they have a mad scanner, or they have super high perception or something, or they're patting you down. I mean, then there's a problem. That's where punching comes in. Oh yes, the uh, the fabled punching adept, or then there's the adepts that do not regularly exist in play until you observe one. I don't know. I, I've I've seen a lot of. Actually, I, I like punching in Sam's. It's it's really good. Like if you get your bone lacing or your um. You know, you, Bone the density. other one. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, plus three damage with my punch. I'm an archive eight strength, 11 damage. I think that sounds pretty good. It's pretty and, good, pretty good. And you can still be good at shooting, but that's a whole street sam thing. So, I mean, in terms of melee weapons, um, there's ev like pretty much everything that you can think of. And if it isn't in here, you could just make it up anyway. I mean, like they just have a sword. And if the weapon is the size of a sword, then fine. Yeah, you, you can just put that in. It, it's not difficult. I mean, maybe you can change around with the AP numbers if you're customizing it, and the cost will be relatively the same. Bump it up if you're the DM if you think it needs to be bumped up, but pretty much everything is good. I mean, there is something to note is that, I mean, like being a big sword user can be difficult because of the concealability of a sword, but then that's when knives and things come in. They're awesome. Unfortunately, combat axes and claymores are really fun to use, you're just never really going to use them, unfortunately. They're just so impractical to carry around as a shadow runner. Yeah, but what about my? Um, I think there's actually a com yeah monofilament combat chainsaw. Can I use that? Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, look at this. It's accuracy five for each one. DV twelve, AP minus eight. <laughs> yeah, hell. that's horrible. And apparently, they actually made combat versions of chainsaws, which to me just sounds ridiculous. But nonetheless, awesome. Uh, I don't know who who was smoking what when they were just so like, let's throw in a combat feature option 
for the people who want to kill each other. Like, literally, you need to buy separate non-combat versions of chainsaws <laughs> if you want to get a non-combat version. Because apparently some corporation was like, we need combat chainsaws. Yeah, I know. I, I, don't know I didn't think it was a demand for that, but oh, fuck, I'll buy one, eh? <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, it's like, there's a demand for this? I'll buy it, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, there are some things where you can understand exactly why there's a uh, like, the demand for it, like the memory blades. Oh, oh yeah. Mwah. That's that's an example of a powerful sword that you can conceal easily. Hobo, tell us about it. Okay, it is called the Victorinox Memory Blade. It is found on page 19 of Run and Gun. And these are the most beautiful little weapons you can get. You can get them either in dagger or in swords. And essentially, they are like a malleable kind of... They're either chains or they're a metal that hardens at a certain command. So you can wear them as belts. And if you have a dagger, you can wear them as bracelets, even. Hell, one of the examples the book gives is that if you have enough of it, you can build shoes out of them. Shoes. That's awesome. That is utterly insane. Wow. Well, yeah, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, just that's the thing, right? Just just looking at the book also, and looking at the descriptions, especially in Run a Gun, and even the normal book, just reading about all the gear. But I guess really, that's all we can say about that. But this is where we get to the more customizable. I mean, th th there's more obscure weapons. What do you have to say about the weird exotic weapons, like the like the bracer shooting gun, whatever? Oh, it was. Okay. Um, you want to talk exotic weapons? I got the exotic weapons in front of me, and I can yeah. say quite a lot about all of them. All right. Yeah. These are the weapons where you need separate skills to use them, and because of that, they drop in uh, value quickly. And a lot of them you can't even get it character creation so it's like it's really awkward but awesome well it's not awkward when you guys show up when your entire party shows up with nothing but you know combat ch monofilament chainsaws because they're all allowed character gen yeah which is pretty funny i mean let's have a look here um what are some of the i mean th there's the laser gun for one um and the uh, gauss rifle oh wait no that's actually that's not no, the gauss rifle was the misprint thank yeah, god yeah, yeah. oh you can get that straight away no you can't i mean but um, that's not a um, exotic weapon, is it? That's actually no. If heavy... we want to talk about exotic melee weapons, we're talking about things like monofilament whips and and ranged weapons and ranged weapons. I know. I can just open up the ranged ones now, and that there are lots of them. There's some pretty nonsensical ones as well. Like I do not know why there's an exotic skill for like laser guns and dark guns. That it shouldn't be because it's I have the same no idea either. It's the same thing. I mean, you also have it for gun canes, you have it for using grappling guns as a weapon, not actually as its intended usage. Yeah, there's a damage value for that. For yes, some... there is. It's uh, like I mean, seven actually, stun. it would hurt a lot if you got hit yeah. by a point-blank grappling gun. Fuck. There's also the, uh, the Ares Screech Sonic Rifle. Wonderful oh, stuff. Oh, there's the microwave gun. Oh, yes. Yeah, and of <laughs> the course... The pain inducer. The pain inducer. You also have your monofilament bowler launcher. Jesus Christ, these weapons are war crimes. <laughs> yes, which is why anyone who takes them has their official title changed to whatever their um, previous non um, runner name was to war crime. Well, you can actually get a flamer, and that is a war crime. Oh, flamethrowers. I want to use them so badly, but it's like the advanced safety feature options on the guns. You never put them on because you know that it's going to go badly and backfire. Uh, I don't know. It it's like, you, yeah, you can get shot and you can explode though. So, <laughs> I think I think there's rules for it in flamethrowers. You can explode. Yes, there are. Tank. Yeah, and and they're not even that good. I mean, they're good, but they're not that good. I mean, if the other the Shiawa's a blazer, which is the 16F one, you can go full auto apparently. Shiawa's a blazer is yeah, it's ten damage, AP minus six. Yeah, full auto though. I don't even know what that means as a flamethrower. By the way, I haven't really checked up the rules. None of my players use them, so. No, we're not. None of us are crazy enough. At the same time, I don't think have any of us used laser weapons yet. Uh, not in 5th, but in 4th we certainly did. Yeah, because laser weapons weren't as crazy in 4th out of memory. Um, actually they were really strong. Um, in some ways, depending, stronger.
because they half the AP of whatever they're shooting. But then again, this is minus 10 AP. Yeah, yeah well, if you have a soak monster, minus 10 doesn't mean anything because I'm still rolling 38 more dice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, let's get on to the kind of things that you can put on your gun. I mean, there's the stuff that you already know, laser pointers and fucking, um, like, stocks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Jesus, I'm forgetting one of the main ones, you know. Smart link. Smart link, of course. Sound suppressors. Sound suppressors, yeah. They're they're, they're like the main stock ones, but there's so much more. There's bipods and um, gyro mounts, which are ridiculous, like back held like braces listen that, there's nothing with, a, with a robotic arm that connects to probably going to be what he's going to be called a machine gun <laughs> yeah like nothing nothing is better than getting gas mount gas vent three systems and a gyro um and a gyro mount for your like aries predator and then going full auto and aries, then aries alpha going... i wouldn't put it on an aries predator honestly yeah, sorry no you can't because you can't get semi-auto on it it's in a semi-auto so not full auto <laughs> well you could you could do it but you'd look like an idiot <laughs> yeah it's so funny <laughs> it's also oh, if, you, if you like, there are so many good options but there are just ones like you don't want to use because if it gets hacked, it becomes a problem. Like safe targeting systems, never, yeah. never shoot your allies. But if someone hacks it, now you can't shoot the enemy, and you can only shoot your allies. It's the same with the advanced safety features, like immobilizer, self destruct, explosive self destruct. But if someone hacks it, it's just gonna blow up in your hands. And like, yeah, you want to repeat the really cool Judge Dread scene from like the new Dread film where the guy's hand blows up when he tries to use a Judge gun. But you know, it's just gonna be you. Yeah, and of course, there's always the stock standard flashlights, and there's so many random ones like Gecko Grip, Personalized Grip. Oh my god, Personalized Grip is great because it raises the accuracy of the gun by one, and only costs like. Generally, I see it being priced at around 200 or 250 Oh, yeah. What's personalized? Is that this one? Oh, I can't see it. Um, then there's... Jesus, there's underbarrel weapons. Underbarrel chainsaw oh, for all you Gears of War fans out there. Underbarrel flamethrower for all your... What is an underbarrel flamethrower in a game? I don't know. There's something it does. I can't remember the game, though. There is, but at the same time, it's just for those murder hubbers in the crowd who want their <laughs> little crispy... Underbarrel cr- grapple gun? <laughs> Fucking so good, <laughs> dude. You could. Uh, it's like just keep putting underbarrel weapons on my underbarrel weapon, please. <laughs> Can you do that? You could in fourth. You can't in this. <laughs> you got underbarrel grenade launcher, underbarrel weight. Well, what does that even do? Actually, I don't even know. I believe underbarrel weight actually gives like some. It should help give accuracy to or recoil comp. I think it gives recoil comp. Underbarrel weight. Da-da-da, one point of recoil compensation when using full auto. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. But, but that usually you have grenade launchers barrel, there. Though. Yeah, usually you're using an Ares Alpha or anything, and you've got or yeah, a foregrip because I like foregrips just so much better. Weapon comlink. Oh, and my personal favorite, weapon personality. Oh God! You can make your weapon like an AI and kind of alive, which is just- yes. Beyond stupid. Because everyone wants their gun to come stand, uh, stock standard with their favorite version of fucking Stalin. Yes, sir, here's your AK-97, and here is your Stalin AI. Jesus, you can... <laughs> Listen to this one, they say, The guttural Neil the Orc Barbarian with, the, with its scalpum grunt to tell you when you got to... When you got a hit is especially popular. Oh, that's good. No, no, when you're scalping people well with your blade. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. It's, it's good. <laughs> Nothing wrong here. Not psychopaths at all. Yeah. Just traditional American. America. All right. Um, we will move on to ammunition. Okay. So, um, this is where what we usually see one thing, which is APDS ammo. Or explosive ammo in absolutely everything, every single gun ever. And oh, gel rounds that's... or stick em shock when you're going the non lethal version. No one uses regular ammo. Or well, as as one of our um, um, old members of our group used to affectionately call APDS, firing new yen. Oh, uh, yeah, how much was it? Because each shot was like 10 new yen. Each, each shot is like. Um... It's, it's 120. 12, it's, it's, no, it's, yeah. it's 12 in each per shot. Yeah, 12 in each per shot. Just remember that when you're going full auto, spending 30 bullets or something when you're doing covering fire, and you just fired 
120 times 3, so yeah, you just fight 360 new unit people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of this stuff actually is good. Like, there are um, ammo that just doesn't get used that is good ammo. And I think wow, some yeah. of it's because it just costs, like... I love the idea of tracker rounds. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm like, wow, that's 150 new yen, but that's a that's really cool idea. They're like, 100, they're like 15 new yen each. That's kind of the problem. They're really expensive. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're used just to get a tracker inside of the person. That's amazing. Or just oh. on cars or anything you shoot. I mean, like, it's... It's not a bad little thing. I mean, like, and some of the other ones aren't too bad either, but you just don't see them get used. Like, capsule rounds actually aren't a bad alternative to stick, um, stick in shock. Yeah, put some Narcojet in there. Boosh! Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Covering fire with a gun that has Narcojet capsule rounds. Yeah, but minus four damage plus four AP scares people. <laughs> Yeah, well, that happens. I mean, you got to remember, it's the contact poison doing the job. You don't have to do a single point of damage to actually, mm -hmm. like, inflict the poison. Well, this is where injection rounds on crossbows come around. Uh, because you can get a 10 damage crossbow, oh. get an injection round, put, like, a neuro stun, which does 15 stun damage, and you're already doing 10 physical damage with your normal shot. <laughs> yeah, they're fucked. Yeah, it's... I mean, you have to do just one point of damage, and then it injects them, and then it's like, hope you make the save. <laughs> Yeah, but they're already taking 10 physical plus whatever net hits you got, and it's got an AP of minus 2, I think, the heavy crossbow. Actually, I'm surprised I haven't seen people use heavy crossbow and injection rounds more, because it's awesome. I mean, like, I guess people just don't... I, I think people just prefer the idea of being, like, I'm not sure if, like, Hawkeye has made it more popular because of the Avengers of recent, yeah, but, like, yeah. de people definitely like seem to like archers more than they like crossbows, but at the same time, they're equally as cumbersome, I find. Well, the bow you need to have high strength to use, but the crossbow you don't. The thing is, is at the point where you're using an assault rifle, you could quite as easily have a crossbow. True. But, yeah, um, that's a whole other thing in terms of bows. Because you need such high strength, they're usually not min-max um, uh, safe, as it were. Alright, um, so here, uh, I'm just looking at the time right now. I think I'm actually going to uh, conclude this is our first episode. So, um, thank you guys for watching this one, and we're going to pick it up in, we'll be probably doing, like, ID, Matrix stuff, and probably where next episode. What do you think, Hubba? Part two, everything else electric boogaloo. Everything else electric boogaloo sounds good. Alright, see you guys then. There's something about tabletop, signing out.